Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another episode of Luxemburger. That's right, you've all waited so patiently and now we can continue our epic Luxemburger playthrough. So, if you remember last time, we were getting incredibly disappointed by the advancements of France. Not necessarily because we don't want France to be on the winning side of the war, but more specifically because we want to hoard this territory for ourselves. And frankly, I'm not too happy that they're doing pretty damn good. Not at all. Not at all. So, what can we do about this particular issue? Well, we can bomb the shit out of the Palatinate first <laughs> and move the 6th Army in to try and bring it down. Our forces are engaged in the, the Rhineland. We have forces engaged in Oldenburg but trying to retreat. And we are bringing more reinforcements into Friesland. So, chances are the war is going to be won by us no matter what. I would just prefer to have more territory gained than not gained. I mean, already we've gained, what, one, two? We've got two territories. Realistically, by the time this war is over, we'll probably have Oldenburg, and we'll probably have the Palatinate and the Rhineland. Or at least, that's what we're hoping to have. Um, I would have liked to, of course, Italy joins on our side. I would have liked to have taken control of Berlin, Lower Saxony, Holstein, uh, the Kiel Canal Zone and Schleswig, so basically the Schleswig-Holstein area there. I would have liked to have gained complete control of that, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It looks like we're just going to have to cry ourselves to sleep. And is this, is this, oh that's French. Those are French troops moving through our territory. Of course, of course they are. We want to stay on the French good side, so I'm not going to cut their supply lines here. But it would be the option I would prefer to do, could I do it. What else should we do? Now we should probably bring in the 8th Army here uh, to the Palatinate and take that over once and for all. The Rhineland's probably going to fall on the next turn and with all the artillery we're dropping on top of the Germans and the Palatinate, there's probably not much left of a fight there either. So, yep, look at that. Wiped out. So we have now taken the Rhineland and the Palatinate. Luxembourg is looking much bigger. We have increased the size of our country by quite a considerable amount considering what we started at. Alright, so looks good. Kingdom of Poland started a rebellion against Russia. Hold your fire. Let's merge all these units into one. So it's now the 22nd army. We'll take the 6th and we're not going to assist at Wittenberg. Instead, we're going to allow the Germans to regain their footing there so that we can try to take it for ourselves. Maybe. It, it does have a lot of resources there, so it would be a great territory to take over, just as the Palatinate is and the Rhineland and so on. Germany is just chock full of resources. This country is incredibly rich, so it is basically in our best interest to try to take as much of it as humanly possible. But now that we've taken the Rhineland, we can move the 22nd Army up and move it closer uh, to Oldenburg, essentially setting us up for an eventual invasion. That's right, we're actually going to start moving these artillery pieces here. How many did we take from the Germans? So it looks like we took five more uh, in the Palatinate. We're going to move those. It looks like just those ones we took. We're going to merge these, stop firing, move them up. Yes, just basically move them all up to Westphalia and so on. All of our units are pretty much moving forward as the front line has indeed moved. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't think I'm going to focus too much on Württemberg. Instead, I think I'm going to focus more on dealing with the northern part of Germany. That's right. France has pretty much got this secured. Unless uh, Austro-Hungary decides to start pushing back against them very, very hard, which I would imagine to be a smart decision. Dear God in heaven, Russia is getting the dog shit slapped out of it right now. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, Russia, that you are going through what you're going through. Anyway, isn't that typical, though? The AI never seems to be able to control the wars that are it, it, it's involved in. Uh, 
in this game, like Russia, anyway. Russia is never able to handle its own wars. It's kind of a shame, really. Kind of a shame. <laughs> it would be interesting to see a stronger, more united Russia. Like, I know this was a very uh, tumultuous time in Russian history and would eventually lead to the rise of communism and so on, but still, and oh my god, here come the fucking British, and I guarantee they're about to swoop that right up from under my nose, and I'm about to be real pissy. How many guns is that? Not many. How many it's, How many men are moving? God, I want to click on there. There we go. All right, uh, so it looks like the Germans are moving in some reinforcements. Um, well, we're about to find out. Yeah, sure, why not? Take seven gold. I've got enough gold. Of course they did. Fuck you, England. Ah, man. This is, this is why you don't give military access to people. Because you will regret it. And you will be pissed off. Because they will just move in thinking they can take whatever land they want. And then it means that essentially all your, your hard-earned trials and errors and whatnot are just going to be capital on, capitalized on by AI interests. Matter of fact, let's click on England right now. And just go ahead and cancel that diplomatic relations. Uh, we're in the state. We're in. Oh, I forgot. We joined their alliance. No wonder they're moving to our alliance. Still lame, bro. Super lame. How many troops they got here? Not enough. How many troops they got there? A lot. A hell of a lot. You think they would push against the French instead of trying to take back control of the Palatinate? Like seriously, fight back against the French. They have a majority of the. German like industry right there uh, so that's stupid fucking AI <laughs> man sometimes sometimes you just cannot get you can't pay for good AI you just can't pay for it you just gotta hope it figures the shit out and it gets it together but sometimes it just doesn't do that uh, so what do we need to do well we should probably stop building units here because like we probably yeah we've only got nine MPUs left of Belgians and we don't really want to utilize all of that particular resource just yet. Building up armies. No bueno, sir. How is this army doing? It's doing just fine. So the British are moving into Lower Saxony. They're going to take that. I can't do anything about it because for some reason m units already moving towards a territory have priority over like these units. See, that's the thing I liked about uh, the original Making History or even games like Hearts of Iron uh, as opposed to this one. This one, it doesn't matter if you have mounted units. They're not faster. It's all based on their weight. And the lighter a unit is, the faster it's going to get to a target or something like that. I don't quite know how it works. All I know is that it's fucking stupid and it makes no sense because you would imagine a mounted cavalry uh, division like, or mechanized infantry. I know they're not mechanized, but they're freaking cavalry. I know they would get there first. Like, that's just point blank. They would get there first. Um, but in this case, you know, that doesn't happen. It's so irritating. So, the British have come in, waited for the war to be over, and just started taking lands willy-nilly. And that does not look good for us. That means a lot of the territories we were about to take control of have literally just been lost and that's pretty depressing Germany is losing territories left and right and it looks like we are about to lose out on all of that sweet sweet uh, territory we could have gotten Austria-Hungary just threw away 11 divisions like look at that 11 divisions wiped out in the Palatinate uh, because of the, for the amount of forces we have there are just supreme <laughs> really odd decision by the Austro-Hungarians but whatever so, well, I guess we'll just keep ending turns. Hopefully, the Germans start making a pushback, which it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do. It looks like this is the end for Germany. The Russians are encroaching from the east. France encroached and just demolished all German industry from the south. And now England is coming from the north, cutting us off. So, it looks like we're not going to get that territory either. Mm -hmm. For shame, for shame. But we could try to take control of Holstein. We do have boats. The main problem is the Germans still have boats as well. 
Um, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's load them onto transports and send them in there, and then we can try to take control of Schleswig and the Kiel Canal Zone and Holstein. We're going to need that territory, and hopefully we can rely on the British Navy to essentially come in here and save those units. I know it's a really probably risky, stupid plan, but it's the only way we're going to gain control of those two territories. Because if we try to march through the British territories, oh shit. And it looks like the British are already moving towards Holstein. So we're going to lose Holstein. At best, we might be able to get Kiel Canal Zone, but that is not looking very likely. And again, the Austro-Hungarians are just throwing men away and their, their bid to take back the Palatinate. Like I said, sometimes AI is just retarded. But we'll move in the 27th Artillery Division and we will start bombing Württemberg. Uh, and maybe we can take control of it before everybody else does. France is making out of this war great. They have a huge amount of territory they have taken away from the Germans. And there ain't shit the Germans can do about it. It seems like. Now, the Austro-Hungarians could, but, you know, just like their real-world counterparts, they're making really stupid decisions and showing military incompetence, which is not something they should be proud of. Which one of these is mine? There we go. There's the second fleet. So let's take control of the second fleet and unload them there. Hopefully, they'll actually make it. They did. Thank God. So it looks like our units are going to be able to make it and to take over the Kiel Canal Zone. I probably should have landed them on the Kiel Canal Zone first rather than dropping them at uh, Schleswig. But whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> My, the, the important part is that the army has indeed landed where it needed to land. And we're going to move in and take this Canal Zone. And hopefully we're going to survive. What's going on here? How is Württemberg doing? All right, good. So the Germans are holding just like we want them to. I don't want the Allies to take control of Württemberg as well. If we could take control of Württemberg, we could actually use it as a bargaining chip to take control of Oldenburg, uh, Lower Saxony, and Holstein, possibly, because it is worth 81 points. It's very valuable territory uh, if we were able to take control of it. I don't think we're going to be able to take control of it now, unfortunately, because it looks like the Allies are throwing just about everything they've got into taking it. Thankfully, they're attacking over a river, so that means that the, any bonuses they have are lost. And uh, it should also be added that Württemberg is a perpetual fucking fortress. It's got three. It's got tier three fortress and uh, one level of... Uh, trench work so honestly they probably could have upgraded to level two if they hadn't already done that so yeah and look the allies are taking redonkulous losses they've lost three four eight nine they've lost nine divisions and haven't killed a single german or austro-hungarian division which is actually really good for us if we want to take that territory so yes we're going to keep our eyes on that battle and fucktastical numbnuts look at this who the hell is this some Germans came in. All right, we're going to drop one of these mounted infantry here. And we're going to send the main group to move up and take back that territory. But we have taken over Kiel, which is awesome. Because now we have access to uh, a shipyard and a tool factory. And we can also build more uh, like barracks and recruiting stations and whatnot to have us more troops. If only we could have taken over Oldenburg, I would be happy. Worst case scenario, we can use uh, these two territories as bargaining ships to trade out for with the Allies. Maybe get control of Oldenburg to get rid of some of that Bordego. Because come on, who likes Bordego? Nobody likes Bordego. All right, let's end our turn again. You know, the Austro-Hungarians in all reality aren't doing that bad. They could have been doing much, much worse. And generally in this scenario, they do do much much worse so you got to give some credit to them for actually managing to hold up their end of the bargain uh for a while but you know all the all the weight that's about to be dumped on them is going to prove to be unstoppable here very soon i wonder if there was oh look and they're actually ripping italy to pieces that's not bad 
I wonder if we could declare war on another country, get them involved in the fighting. I think that would make for an interesting scenario. Uh, let's see, because we're at war with Turkey as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Ottoman Empire. No, we're not. Interesting. Let's see. Okay. Uh, how are they not in the war? Yeah, they're totally not in the war. So let's get them in the war. Maybe they can come in from the south on our allies. Okay, so I should probably explain my, my, my train of thought here. If we're playing as Luxembourg, the chances of us being able to overcome like France or England or anyone like that is pretty slim. Now, our army is indeed pretty strong. It's the seventh most powerful in the world. But we still don't quite have what we need to be able to take on the big boys on the schoolyard. So what I'm thinking is if we start declaring war on people uh, and bringing war up against them, that brings our chances of success better because our allies are going to get hurt badly. So let's declare war on Spain. Yes, call allies to the war. There we go. Oh yeah, see that's what daddy's talking about. So now we're at war with Spain. Alright, now Spain will probably come in from the south, but Spain does not have a very big army. So more than likely, Spain is pretty much going to be a chopping block. <laughs> it's just going to get beat by allied troops. But it can actually help out the central powers a bit, uh, in any case. So that could be interesting. Uh, how big is Switzerland? Switzerland does not have a very big army either. It's a shame. Wish they had a stronger one. We could go to war with Denmark, but we don't have enough troops there. That additional territory we would conquer would be very, very useful. Um, one thing we can do is we have a lot of shipping capacity. So we could take one of our massive armies and gather it up at Flanders and ship them on out down to Spain and take control of Spain for ourselves. That could be an interesting scenario. We might actually, we're actually going to do that with the 34th Army to take some of that territory. So let Spain uh, distract France a little bit in the south. We bring our armies around and land them probably like near Gibraltar or even the northern coastline of Spain. And I think we have ourselves a nice little conquest, you know, because then we can at least take that territory and we can. Um, industrialize it for ourselves, making Luxembourg an even more powerful power uh, in the world. So yeah, that's actually a pretty damn good idea. <laughs> and that's probably going to work out very well for us. I hope. I sure do hope. And it looks like, that. yeah, see there we go. Now the Spanish are indeed moving against France. They're moving into southern France. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think war against Bulgaria would also be a good idea. Bulgaria has carved itself a nice little empire out there. Its armies are not very big, but it could be enough of a distraction uh, against the Russians to put a dent in their forces. Maybe, maybe not put a dent, but at least distract from the ever-encroaching defeat that is about to be handed to the uh, Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. So it's definitely a consideration. Definitely a consideration. And oh my god, look how many divisions they've lost now. 5, 7, 8, so 13, 15, 15 divisions. And basically, if you're looking at it as 10,000 men a division, you're looking at 150,000 men have died at Württemberg, and they haven't even managed to disrupt one German division yet. That's crazy. That is just obscene. Absolutely obscene. Um, so, hmm, good luck to them. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying watching this as much as I'm enjoying playing it. This is going to get pretty interesting, if you ask me. Especially now that we are encroaching upon Spain and expanding our influence as best we can. Now that we're in with the Allies, the chance of them kicking us out is slim or trying to fight back against us. We have influence with these people now. So Luxembourg is on a springboard, you could say, uh, to do some crazy stuff. So yes, yes, it's, it's just only going to get more interesting from here. So keep on watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. And if you are really enjoying it, feel free to like and do all that crap that uh, people do when they like things. They throw down likes and 
comments and all that good stuff and let me know what you guys are thinking what's on your mind anyway this has been cv thanks so much for watching guys and i'll oh, god damn 18 divisions see you next time